particular video, we'll be looking at uh, two-dimensional data visualization uh, using a particular MATLAB. Let's say that we have an independent variable called x varying from 1 till 10 and in steps of 1 by default, of course. And let's say that we have another function y is equals to a parabola y is equals to x dot um, square right the dot we do it because we need an array operation or in other words element wise operations if we evaluate this particular thing we're going to get the values of x and y in memory first of all uh, i forgot to clear all uh, so it will be a good practice in case you are starting something fresh and uh, let's say that we want to plot this particular function of plot x comma y uh, we're going to get a plot of x and y like this okay this is a pretty good plot but the thing is um, uh, you can improve the uh, content or the visualization part of it and the way in which it is displayed you can actually display it the control the color that you want k means color is black and you can also uh, mention the color as y is yellow g is uh, green and uh, r means uh, red and uh, c means cyan and uh, blue mean b means blue and so on and so forth i'll write k and uh, i'll uh, just run this so now you can see that the color of the line has been switched to black from blue and i can also mention something like this okay let's see what happens if i write this and uh, enter evaluations oh my god what are we seeing here instead of having a line the each of the data points is being displayed as a square right but what if i also want the continuous lines along with the square i just write dash ks then I'm going to have the straight lines as well as the markers, all right? So now these, this is called as the line entity. This is this is the line, and this is the marker, okay? Or the data marker. Data marker you can have in many different forms, but you can also have KO. KO means you will be having uh, circular markers, uh, and uh, you can also have um, uh, left triangle, okay? Left triangle you will be having it like this. You can also have a hexagon. Uh, in this in this case you're going to get it like this and uh, moreover more interestingly you can actually control the size of the markers that you are putting there the way you do to do it is marker size all right marker size put it to 12 you can actually see that uh, marker size has increased okay so now that is one thing and uh, you can also control the what is the color of the ma uh, the marker face here for example let's see that uh, uh, we are plotting this if we want each of the markers to be color colored in red color all right so how do we do this right so now put a comma there and uh, what we need is marker face color and i want it in red color okay so i just run this particular expression so now you are able to see that the individual markers are turning to red in color okay and uh, further you also have uh, certain important things like how do you change the line width all right width of the line uh, let's say i want a width of the line as two so then i mentioned line width all right uh, so when i run this particular expression you're going to get the line width of two the thickness of the line has increased now let's try and make it around uh, uh, three and uh, it is always better to um, uh, enter a multi-line expression sometimes because in case uh, how do you write a multi-line expression is put triple dots and it will turn into blue and that means that the second line is a continuation of the first and now you can see that the line thickness has changed and at the same time your color of the markers are also changed and the marker type is uh, red in color and you will have a continuous line indicated by a hyphen which you have placed and the data which you are placing is x versus y and y is basically uh, defined as x squared in which case you are plotting a parabola uh, plot the independent variable and the dep uh, independent variable um, this actually symbolizes the way in which the plot is being done in terms of the marker specification and the line color and also the line type that you need if you need double dotted lines uh, dashed lines so now you can actually specify a double dash there now you can see a dashed line and uh, there are many different types of markers also you can go ahead with uh, dash dot let's see what it will do uh, now you see that it is a dashed and a dotted line what if I wanted a dotted line uh, everywhere? So now I put it uh, in terms of a semi or a colon. Now uh, you are able to see that this particular line has becoming in a dotted line, and that is one thing. And uh, you can also have uh, uh, another mark. Let's, let's say that we have another mark marker like this, and uh, this is one thing. And what if you have a line color which you cannot control in this place, right? So what I'm going to do um, slash o. I'm going to run this particular expression 
the default color line is blue and it has been already taken so if i want to do change the color of the line it is not there in your syllabus probably you can do uh, it is better that we don't go at it at all i'll put it in a separate video later on right this is uh, this is how you can change the uh, options of your particular um, window and uh, you can also set the axis limits uh, say for example uh, axis and uh, x min x max y min and y max uh, you can set the particular axis limits let's say that i want an axis axis limit of minus 5 to or uh, minus 50 or say minus uh, uh, 150 to 150 and uh, along the this particular thing i need let's say i i need to see where is this going uh, okay x varies from um, zero so it will go for minus 15 to plus 15 say and i can also have minus 5 and uh, y min could be starting from uh, minus uh, 5 itself but y max could go up to around 150 so now uh, when we run this particular expression we're going to see that uh, the parabola has been put here and uh, to better visualize this you can also have something like grid on uh, grid on now you see what is the benefit of using this you see the grid on right now some places what you need you can see a clear box defined here by default for two dimensional graph you have box on you can also have a box off see what happens when we mention this so basically all along the top and the top right corners on the edges you don't have a box there but in which case if you define it clearly that the box is on then it defines that the box will be on in the case of a figure window as well that is one thing and uh, in most of the cases you need to label your axis okay uh, x label x label could be x axis right x axis and uh, y label could be y axis when you particularly execute these commands you're going to see that uh, x labels and y labels have been numbered right and have been uh, they have been actually given names and uh, further uh, you can also define a title there uh, title of uh, this is the graph of y is equals to x y is equals to x squared right so now you particularly define this particular function like this and we execute this now you can see that the graph has received a title like this is the graph of y is equals to x squared okay now uh, we are pretty much finishing most of the uh, functions and let's say that there is one more command that i need to introduce you to this is called as a hold on basically you will be seeing it uh, when you when we for, uh, plot it further right now let me just comment it and it is not going to execute when i run it and uh, there is another thing which is going to happen now i'll uh, i i also want to write down um, this is say i'll just copy and paste this and uh, this is say around i want 2.5 and this actually i make it as y1 and plot uh, y1 and uh, this i'm going to make it continuous line and uh, line width i'll keep it as uh, 2 and uh, this i will make it as square markers and k as marker face colors i'm going to change momentarily to k or even for white color and uh, let's say now i plot this particular function and uh, say we'll go back oh my god what has happened okay the, the circular markers are all vanished so the what what is happening here is the previous plot is being overwritten by the new plot we don't want that to happen in most of the cases so we need a hold on right whenever you mention a hold on and basically matlab starts to know that uh, you are uh, you need uh, this plot along with another plot so if i run the entire thing okay i'll close the existing figure window right now and uh, run the entire thing you know we can see that um, this uh, is a culprit right now i'll comment the axis and uh, i'll continue evaluation now you can actually see that along the x-axis and y-axis you have the labels defined and the title is also be defined but you have two particular graphs one is the red color markers indicate the y is equals x square while the white color markers or the square markers indicate y is equals x bar 2.5 it's always better to name your uh, graph so in which case you need to use legends all right legends one entry for the first graph and the second entry for the second graph so okay first entry is basically y is equals to x squared and the second entry is y is equals to 2 x power 2.5 when i run this particular expression you're going to see that the graph has received a legend but in which case we have a problem the legend is sitting on the graph that we don't need it so basically um, uh, uh, looking at the figure window this the way i am pointing it is north okay uh, if that is north it should be east south and west 
so basically the legend has been default by put at northeast location we need to change the location how do you change the location one more entry there right to location and you need the location where you need north west right so now just run this particular expression and go ahead and see now that this uh, legend has actually come to the top left corner that is one thing and uh, you can also see uh, you can also see a tiny box around it which we most of the time which will not be using it so we will not need it so what we are going to do uh, we are going to okay this is not there in your syllabus forget about it uh, this is it with most of the plotting uh, in uh, two dimensional graphs uh, and you can plot multiple uh, uh, multiple graphs also on this particular thing and uh, this is with two dimensional simple plot command right and uh, there are other types of plot commands also you can make use of for example uh, let's say that uh, we're going to start a new section now uh, uh, let me introduce you to three dimensional graphs uh, i'll particularly close this figure window uh, close close all and evaluate you so you see the figure window which was open has now been closed and that is one thing and uh, you also have a three dimensional graph let's define the value of x as uh, uh, 0 to 10 okay 0 to 10 and uh, y as values of uh, 0 to 10 and uh, i want to make a um, uh, a function of z as basically z is varying from z equals um, say x squared plus y um, x to the power 2.5 plus uh, y to the power 2.5 this is my for a particular function and i want to make a plot of these three things okay plot of x comma y comma z right now let's see what has happens uh, when I evaluate this, there gives an error. Okay, it gives an error. The data must be a single matrix Y or list of pairs. That's because we are trying to make a three-dimensional plot using plot command, which is basically inaccurate. You need to make use of the plot three command if you want to do this. So right-click, evaluate, evaluate selection. So now you can three a particular plot uh, which is being displayed in front of you. Uh, now you have a function of y is equals to x to the power 2.5 plus y to the power 2.5 that is one function that we have right now and uh, let's say that uh, we also make another uh, particular uh, let's change this value some uh, 10 okay let let retain it um, uh, this is one thing but what about a three dimensional graph we are not able to visualize it three dimensionally in the sense that we are not able to surface visualize the plot okay if you want to surface visualize the plot basically you need to create an array or uh, let's say let's define xx and yy to be equals to a uh, mesh grid of x comma y basically what this creates or how this particular thing works is uh, let's say that uh, a is um, i'll create a simple matrix one two three and uh, b is another matrix uh, four five six seven um, five six and seven and uh, let's see what happens when i create a mesh a a and b b will be equals to mesh grid of a comma b and we see what happens is basically you have created a mesh grid out of the elements that you have that you had individually so basically you had a is one two three and b is five six seven what has happened is a grid has been created of one two three one two three one two three and five six five five six five 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 six 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 and six six seven you basically now in this case you see that it is along the x core it's along the column but uh, it is varying along the column but in this case it is varying along the rows right so where you have created a grid and uh, you are going to do all the operations on the particular grid right now not on the x and y this has been created now you basically define your z function z function is xx to the power of 2.5 plus yy to the power of 2.5 this has been created now let's let's uh, just execute this uh, if we want to execute this we need to select uh, this and this and then execute we have executed this so now what do you need to make uh, you need to make a plot okay through surface visualization surf of xx comma yy comma zz so now when you include this we have a good surface visualization plot of the data that we have we can also rotate this okay now uh, the visualization can be better improved when you basically have a grid uh, grid on and uh, grid on is by default and uh, box on box is off by default for three dimensional graphs so now you see that box also has come into picture now uh, you can further improve the data by axis square axis square basically squarifies the entire axis now you see uh, the aspect ratio is maintained everywhere and it looks neat okay that is one thing 
and uh, further you can go ahead and define all the uh, x label y label and z label that you have defined earlier so now i'm just going to copy and paste all these things anyway uh, you have uh, x label is x axis y label once again y axis and z label will be uh, z axis right title this is that graphs to z is equals to uh, x to the power 2.5 plus y to the power of 2.5 this is one thing and uh, when we basically execute all these things we can see that some things have changed that means basically you have created something but still there is a problem if you look at the title the title is not appearing properly how to how to rectify this particular thing x to the power whatever you write should be inside flower brackets and uh, this is a matlab attachment that we don't want in the title now you see that the title will be displayed properly now okay title is being displayed properly with a small hinge okay now what has happened is basically i have uh, put the curly braces behind this and now it should be proper uh, yes now it is proper z is equal to export to 0.5 let's say that the uh, font size uh, is not there in your syllabus i'll just show it to you if h title i'm going to write behind it like this uh, probably this is going to help the students from play with graphs uh, set h title font size to say around 12 So now you see that the size of the title has increased. Now I can also define uh, 14 uh, separately, and uh, yes, now the font size can be increased now separately in the same way. In the has just like this, I can also do it for H uh, X label, H Y label, and H Z label, and uh, set H uh, X label font size 14, etc., etc. That is also possible, and basically uh, you can also replace this particular uh, command here, surf by mesh command, in which case. Uh, uh, let me define a close all function over there and uh, you can uh, now define a mesh command instead of the surf command that is also possible and uh, you can also have a contour uh, command uh, instead of that when uh, we actually see a contour plot being displayed now uh, basically when we have the um, contour plot you can actually have the number of lines that you want you can control the number of lines that you need if i, if I want 20 lines i can define how many lines that i want let me put on the grid uh, grid off and uh, let me put around 50 lines that i need and uh, now you can actually visualize the data in which it is uh, it, it, it is uh, varying along the x and y axis then now why should of this uh, you can pick a better visualization of contour field contour plots basically when you run this you have a clean variation all along uh, the uh, x and y axis and the z axis is actually the variation in the data which is the variation in the color which is being displayed okay that is one thing and uh, you also have a water flood, water uh, fall plot okay now when i when i particularly run this expression now you can see that okay forget about the water fall plot it's not there in your syllabus anyway okay